वेलकम बैक स्टूडेंट्स टू केमिस्ट्री कॉन्सेप्ट दिस इज पंकज सिंह एंड नाउ वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट वेलेंस शेल इलेक्ट्रॉन पेयर रिपल्शन थ्योरी वी एस ई पी आर थ्योरी वेलेंस शेल इलेक्ट्रॉन पेयर रिपल्शन थ्योरी एंड द फर्स्ट पॉसिबिलिट इज दैट द शेप ऑफ अ मॉलिक्यूल डिपेंड्स ऑन द नंबर ऑफ वेलेंस शेल इलेक्ट्रॉन पेयर प्रेजेंट इन एटम as the name suggest the theory says the geometry of a molecule will depend on its valence shell electrons for example if i talk about ammonia molecule in ammonia nitrogen has total 5 electrons three electrons are used to form three bonds with hydrogen atoms and one lone pair of electron is there so how many total valence shell electron pairs are there One, two, three, four, three bond pairs and one lone pair. So, as per this theory, geometry of ammonia molecule will depend on all these four bond, four pairs of electrons, which will include lone pairs as well as bond pairs, all the valence electrons. Okay, and the next statement postulate is. that the basic actually uh, criteria or the assumption about uh, before uh, uh, for this theory is that pairs of electrons in the valence shell repel one another around the central atom so basically the theory says that if there are three electron pairs to the four electron pairs that means three bond pairs and one lone pair then what happens that these electron pairs repel one another lone pair bond pair bond pair bond pair lone pair lone pair because doesn't matter if they are bonded or they are not bonded if they are bond pair or they are lone pair they are electrons okay and electrons will repel one another because they all are negatively charged so they will try to to be as a part as possible from one another for example if there is two bonds they will repel one another and they will take they, they'll go as far as possible from one another resulting into linear structure with 180 bond angle so this is the second postulate that the geometry depends upon both bond pair as well as lone pair and these bond pairs and these lone pairs repel one another so that they 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 get a position as far as possible from one another in space now the next postulate is these pair of electrons tend to occupy such position in space that minimize repulsion and thus thus maximize the distance between them the same thing which i just explained that these bond pairs and lone pairs will repel one another and they will try to get a position as far as from one another in the space and the one uh, more possibility is there that if there is a single bond and if there are double bonds these double bonds are regard, regarded as a single bond in this valence shell electron pair repulsion theory okay the multiple bond is treated as it is a single electron pair they are not regarded as two different electron pair they are regarded as a single electron pairs okay and when we talk about repulsions we are saying they are lone pairs lone pairs are those electrons which are not being used for forming bond and bond pairs are those which are forming bond so they repel one another but is it not it, it is not like they repel equally to one another lone pair and lone pair repulsion is very strong two lone pairs repel one another very strongly after that comes lone pair bond pair repulsion that is the repulsion between a lone pair and a bond pair and a bond then comes bond pair bond pair repulsion there are three type of repulsions first is repulsion between lone pair lone pair which is strongest one then comes repulsion between lone pair and bond pair and the least strong one strong uh, and the least one is repulsion between bond pair and bond pair fine now structure of the molecules actually there are five different main structures 
and there's some formula LP plus bond P. Bond P is bond pair, LP is loan pair. If the sum of bond pair and loan pair is 2, the structure would be linear. If sum of bond pair and loan pair is 3, structure would be trigonal planar. If the sum is 4, the structure would be tetrahedral. If it is 5, structure would be trigonal bipyramidal. If it is 6, structure would be octahedral. And here it is given. First one with 180 bond angle is linear structure. This one is trigonal planar. This one is tetrahedral and this one is trigonal bipyramidal. Octahedral looks like look like this. Now let's let's have a look at all these structures one by one. First is linear structure. If I give you example of BE Cl2. Beryllium has two electrons in its valence shell, and both the electrons are used for forming bond with two chlorine atoms. So there is no lone pair of electrons left bond pair 2 2 bonds lone pair is 0 so bond pair plus lone pair is 2 thus so if bond pair and lone pair is sum of bond pairs and lone pairs is 2 the structure would be linear with 180 bond angle that means there would be beryllium in the center chlorine another chlorine with a bond angle of 180 degree Similarly, if we talk about carbon dioxide molecule, carbon has four electrons into valence shell and it forms two double bonds with two oxygen atoms. So there is no lone pair again and as we have seen that the last postulate of the valence shell electron pair repulsion theory was that multiple bonds are considered as single pair of electron so it's not like that these are four bond pairs it is actually two bond pair and zero lone pair so sum is again two and the structure will again be linear with 180 bond angle fine okay next is trigonal planar and this is the case when bond pair and lone pair is equal to 3 and the example is AlCl3 Aluminium has 3 electrons in its valence shell when it forms 3 single bonds with 3 chlorine atoms there is no lone pair left lone pair is 0 bond pair is yes bond pair is 3 sum of lone pair and bond pair is again 3 and if the sum is 3 the structure would be not linear it would be trigonal planar with 120 degree bond angle Okay. Now let's have a look at another example. Okay, this one is trigonal planar. Uh, sulfur dioxide. Now what happens? Sulfur has six, six electrons. Two are used to form a double bond with oxygen. Two are used to form a coordinate bond with another oxygen. And one lone pair is left. So how many bond pairs are there? Two. How many lone pairs are there? One. Sum is three. So structure would be again trigonal planar. 
on the two corners two oxygen atom and on the third corner of the triangle there is a lone pair so if bond pair plus lone pair is 3 structure would be trigonal planar next is tetrahedral and this is the case when bone bond pair plus lone pair is 4 for example CH4 carbon has 4 electrons all the 4 electrons are used to form 4 single bonds with carbon atoms 4 single bonds with hydrogen atoms so bond pair is 4 lone pair is 0 fine if it is so the structure would be tetrahedral that is a carbon atom and 4 hydrogen atoms on the corner of 4 tetrahedrals with an angle of 109 degree ok so this was the case like this A B 4 where bond pair was 4 lone pair was 0 there is one more case A B 3 with a lone pair that means bond pairs are 3 and a lone pair is 1 and that is the case of ammonia molecule nitrogen forming 3 bonds and 1 lone pair this is tetrahedral geometry and, and pyramidal structure a common name is given to the structure of uh, ammonia pyramidal ok there is one more case A B 2 with 2 lone pairs that is bond pair is 2 lone pair is also 2 sum is 4 and this is the example of this is the case of water molecule water forms 2 single bonds with 2 hydrogen atoms ok and oxygen has still remaining 2 lone pairs ok it is somewhat like tetrahedral structure but the case is that 2 corners of the tetrahedron are occupied by 2 lone pairs and this is called bent structure and this is the structure of water molecule now ideal tetrahedral structure is 109 but the structure of ammonia because of presence of a lone pair which repels bonds pair bond angle becomes 107 and in case of water because there are two lone pairs the bond angle becomes about 103 to 104 trigonal bipyramidal and this is the case when bond pair plus lone pair is 5 for example PCL5 phosphorus has 5 electrons and all the 5 electrons are used to form 5 bonds and the lone pair is 0 so the structure becomes phosphorus in the center chlorines in the corner there is a trigonal structure and then one structure upside one down a triangle with two pyramids the structure becomes something like this trigonal bipyramidal two different bond angles axial bond angles are at 90 while equatorial bonds are at 120 so this was the case this was the case of a b 5 type that means bond pair is 5 lone pair is 0 bond pair plus lone pair becomes 5 example is PCL5 now there is one more case there is one more case possible AB4 with a lone pair that means bond pair is 4 lone pair is 1 ok and this could be case where and there is one more case possible 
P CL three uh, A B three with two lone pairs. Okay. Okay. Let's have an example of A B four. If there's a compound F S F four, sulfur has six electrons. Okay. Four are used to form bonds with four fluorine atoms, and one lone pair is left. Okay. Fine. Another case is. F, uh, it is Cl, F, three. Chlorine has seven electrons. Three are used to form bonds with fluorine atoms, and two and four are that means two lone pairs are left. Okay, so this is another possibility. Next is octahedral, where lone pair and plus bond pair is equal to six, and the example is S F six. Sulfur has six electrons, and all the six are used to form bonds with six fluorine atoms. The structure is called octahedral with a bond angle of 90. I hope these structures were clear to you. If not, you can always ask in our comment section. Please don't forget to subscribe for the more videos of organic and inorganic and physical chemistry. Stay tuned. Thank you.